Don't buy the wrong CPU in your next laptop. I've compared the current mid-range processors from Intel and AMD in 25 games and applications, as well as thermals, power draw, battery life, and more to show you all the differences. Intel are offering more total cores and threads with 13th gen due to their hybrid design that uses higher powered performance and lower power efficiency cores. Both CPUs have similar single core turbo boost speeds, however the i7 has more cache. They both support DDR5 memory, but Intel limits their i7 to DDR5-5200, while Ryzen 7 can run the memory faster at DDR5-5600. I bought two Lenovo Legion Slim 5 gaming laptops to do this testing as fairly as possible, so these laptops are exactly the same with the only difference being the CPUs. Same RAM, same cooling, same battery, same everything. So this video wasn't cheap to make, let's fix that. Gigabyte have sponsored this part of the video. Gigabyte's high and Aorus gaming laptops have been redesigned this year, while budget conscious gamers are covered by the updated G5. These laptops are more powerful than ever with Nvidia's latest GeForce RTX 40 series graphics, allowing you to enhance your gaming experience and get smoother gameplay with DLSS 3 frame generation in the latest titles. And Gigabyte have got content creators covered with their newly updated Aero 16 and brand new Aero 14 for ultimate portability. Check out the sponsored link below to find out more. Back to the comparison. In the past, battery life has been the biggest difference between Intel and AMD laptops. But that changes here. Don't get me wrong, AMD was still better here, but it's got a far smaller lead than in previous years, with Intel still lasting more than 7 hours and 40 minutes while playing a YouTube video. To be fair, this may just be a Lenovo optimization thing, because if we compare AMD and Intel laptops to tested so far this year, well, there's a clear trend showing an AMD advantage in red when it comes to battery life. Performance while running on battery power is another area where AMD often does better too. CPU performance in Cinebench 2024 was quite similar with the charger plugged in, but then Intel's multi-core performance dips down lower when you unplug the charger. So not only does AMD last longer when running on battery power, but it performs better on battery power too. Lenovo's included Vantage software gives us the option to control the power limit of both CPUs. More power equals more performance, but also more heat. We can see just how much different power limits matter here. Give me a second to explain what's going on. The blue bars show Intel's 13700H, while the red bars show AMD's 7840HS. I've tested both in 5 watt increments between 40 and 100 watts, though Intel could go a little further before thermals became a limit. Basically, this shows that with 90 watts or less, AMD beats Intel in this workload. The gap is much bigger at lower power levels, demonstrating that AMD is more power efficient because it's scoring much higher with the same power limit. In thinner laptops, 50 to 60 watts for a CPU only workload is common, while most normal sized 15 inch models seem to run around 80 to 90 watts. Realistically, we only see 100 watts plus in more enthusiast grade machines, so the performance difference will ultimately depend on the power limits offered by the laptop you're looking at. And this is why I always show it in my reviews. With that in mind, the rest of the testing has been done at either 50 or 85 watts to represent lower and higher end laptops. Unfortunately, it would just take an insane amount of time to test everything at 13 different power levels. Both CPUs performed very closely in terms of single core performance, just a slight lead with Intel. But like we saw in the power scaling, Intel is able to come out ahead in multi-core with more power. Interestingly, the AMD laptop was running warmer at both power levels. Intel has generally run warmer in previous generations, but that's not the case this year. The 7840HS was quite close to thermal throttling at 85 watts, which is why this is the highest power limit used for the comparison. But technically, it does mean the Intel laptop has more headroom than this. The Ryzen processor was able to reach higher clock speeds because it has fewer cores to power, almost 4.7 GHz over all 8 cores was sustained in this multi-core workload at 85 watts, while Intel's 6 P cores got to 3.9GHz and 8 E cores ran at 3GHz. 
Both laptops were using a similar amount of power when measured at the wall. AMD was a few watts behind with both running with an 85 watt power limit. So not only is the Intel laptop using slightly more power, but it's able to run cooler too. This gives them a similar performance per watt value at the 85 watt power limit. However, as mentioned earlier, AMD is more power efficient at lower wattage. Let's move into the only tests that were done in Linux instead of Windows. Linux kernel compilation was faster with AMD regardless of power limit, and that's the case with LLVM compilation too. However, Intel was able to close the gap at the higher 85 watt power limit. Flack encoding was a little faster on AMD too, but the difference is smaller in this much faster test. Back to the Windows tests. Handbrake video encoding was about the same with both CPUs at 50 watts, but then Intel was faster with more power applied. It's a similar deal with the Corona renderer. The move from 50 to 85 watts only gives AMD a 5% boost, while Intel on the other hand was scoring 25% higher with the extra power. Blender was similar, with AMD faster than Intel with both at 50 watts, but then Intel was ahead in three of the two tests at 85 watts. AMD still had the lead in the classroom test, but it's only a 5% lead. Rendering with V-Ray on the other hand was always ahead on AMD regardless of power level. Interestingly, Adobe Photoshop was scoring better on the AMD laptop. This test has preferred single core performance in the past, so I expected Intel to win, but that wasn't the case. I also expected Intel to win in Adobe Premiere based on past comparisons, but AMD is competing nicely here, actually winning at 50 watts and then within margin of error range against Intel at 85 watts. DaVinci Resolve was quite close too, a subtle lead to AMD at 50 watts, but an Intel win at 85 watts. Though again, these are small differences, and realistically, you'll be editing videos well with either. Meanwhile, it's the opposite in MATLAB, with Intel slightly faster at 50 watts, but then AMD slightly faster once more power is applied. Decompression is an area where AMD has beaten Intel for years, and that continues here, regardless of power level. AMD was faster at compression with less power, but Intel came out ahead with more power. Power level doesn't affect the AES encryption and decryption tests, and although AMD was behind, it's not by that much. In previous generations, the gap has been far larger than this, so this appears to be an area where Ryzen has improved this generation. Microsoft Office performed a little better with Intel at both power levels, but this test is broken up into four different applications. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. The biggest difference was seen in Outlook. So I guess stick to Intel if you're sending tons of mail. Crossmark tests a bunch of different things, and was a little better with Intel too. The overall scores get broken down into subscores for creativity, productivity, and responsiveness. And again, Intel always had the lead. Speaking of responsiveness, Intel was faster in terms of web browsing with the latest version of Google Chrome. This runs a bunch of tasks in the browser like processing JavaScript. Geekbench is one of the few tests we have that has a single core component. Like Cinebench, Intel had the lead here, but it's with a larger margin this time. Though again, it's only a small difference. Intel ends up 3% slower than AMD on average out of all applications tested with both power limited to a 50 watt TDP. Each line on this graph shows how much faster or slower Intel was against AMD. So Intel really dominated in web browser responsiveness, but lost the most in compilation. AMD just won in more cases than it lost with a lower power limit, which isn't too surprising as we saw that it's more power efficient at lower levels in the power scaling graph earlier. Intel ends up 2% faster than AMD on average out of the same selection of applications with both processors instead power limited to 85 watts. At the end of the day, in a big enough selection of applications, the difference in performance is quite small. But as we can see here, it can vary quite a bit depending on the specific application. Alright cool, but what about gaming? We've tested both laptops in 26 games at 1080p and 1440p resolutions without any upscaling. And all games were tested fresh a few days apart, so same game updates, same Windows updates, and same drivers. And same CPU and GPU power limits. This is as fair as it gets. 
let's start out with Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered. I've got the 1080p results below and the 1440p results above, with AMD below Intel at each resolution. Intel was ahead in both tests, with an 11% higher average FPS at 1080p, but then only a 2% lead at the higher 1440p resolution. That said, Intel still has better 1% lows, which means less dips in performance. Watch Dogs Legion on the other hand was a win for AMD, and that's the case at both resolutions and in terms of average frame rates and 1% lows. Meanwhile, many games like Starfield had basically no difference at all, but there might be a bigger difference at lower setting levels where we're less GPU bound. Shadow of the Tomb Raider had the biggest win for Intel out of all 26 games tested, coming out 12% faster at 1080p and 11% faster at 1440p. A Plague Tale Requiem was ahead on AMD. It doesn't look like much, and it's not, just 3 FPS faster at 1080p, but this was the second biggest difference in favour of Ryzen. Doom Eternal on the other hand was the second best game in favour of Intel, with the i7 reaching a 12% higher average FPS at 1080p and 8% higher at 1440p. Look, I'm not going to waste your time individually talking through the rest of the 20 games tested, because for the most part, the results are more of what we saw earlier in Starfield. No major difference in other words. Feel free to pause the video if you want a closer look at any of the games tested. It took a long time to test so many titles, but I think it's important to use a wide selection of games so that we can get an accurate picture of the average performance differences to make the fairest possible conclusion. Like I always say, more data equals more better. Let's look at those average differences next. On average over all 26 games tested, at 1080p Intel's Core i7 13700H was just 1% faster compared to AMD's Ryzen 7 7840HS. Basically nothing. This graph shows how much faster or slower Intel was in each game. So best case, Shadow of the Tomb Raider was 12% faster with Intel up the top, while Watch Dogs Legion was faster on AMD. 20 of the 26 games had less than a 5% FPS difference one way or the other, so there aren't any major differences. Stepping up to the higher 1440p resolution, and there's an even smaller difference, because more pixels generally use the GPU. Basically, if you're gaming at 1440p and higher, for the most part, it really doesn't matter which of these CPUs you pick. Only four of the games are showing a difference that I'd consider bigger than the margin of error range. Here's how frame rates look if we instead take the average of all 26 games at all resolutions. I think this better allows us to visually see the overall difference in a quick and easy summary. And just like we've been talking about, there's no major difference at all between these processes. It's a different story when running a game only on the integrated graphics. AMD was 55% faster than Intel in Cyberpunk 2077 at 720p high settings, though the dips in performance shown by the 1% lows were very similar. This isn't too surprising. iGPU gaming performance has been better with AMD for years now, which is partly why so many handheld consoles like the ROG Ally use Ryzen. Intel had a subtle edge when it came to total system latency, which is how long it takes between clicking the mouse and a gunshot firing in Counter-Strike 2. Whether Optimus was on and we're factoring in the integrated graphics, or Optimus off, Intel was a couple of milliseconds faster. So maybe Intel is the way to go if you're seriously competitive. But this is a very small difference. But what's the price difference? Pricing and availability will change over time, so check the links below the video for updates and current sales. And if any laptops with either of these CPUs do go on sale, we'll be sure to add them to our gaminglaptop.deals website. We update that every day so that you can save money on your next gaming laptop. But sales come and go every day, so make sure you check it out regularly. At the time of recording, the AMD version of Lenovo's Legion Slim 5 that I've tested here goes for $1,220 US with the same specs. But for some reason, the Intel configuration costs more. Right now, it's $80 more for Intel. But last week before 
before these sales, it was $200 more. Price will of course vary quite a bit depending on how you change the specs. And you can customize this laptop yourself quite a bit with the link in the description. AMD is able to offer better value from a cost per frame perspective, at least with the current pricing. Yeah, Intel was a little better in games, but it's not $80 better. And outside of gaming, AMD was also offering better value in terms of Cinebench 2024 multi-core score. Honestly, in terms of gaming performance, it doesn't really matter whether you go Intel or AMD this generation. Just get whichever's cheaper. The performance is pretty much the same. Again, it can matter more outside of gaming. It just depends on what workloads you plan on running. Out of the specific applications I've chosen to test, on average, there's only a minor difference between Intel and AMD. If you're doing a lot of video encoding with Handbrake, then maybe Intel makes more sense. Or if you're doing a lot of compiling, then AMD might be the way to go. And let's not forget from the start of the video that AMD generally gives better battery life and performs better with the charger unplugged. Combined with the fact that AMD was cheaper, and I've got to give the overall win to AMD this generation. But if both CPUs are available for about the same price, and you don't care so much about battery life or performance on battery, then Intel's fine too. It probably even makes a little more sense if you're just gaming. I guess what I'm trying to say is ultimately, it doesn't matter too much which CPU you pick. You can't go too wrong with either. And honestly, what matters more at this point is the actual laptop that the CPU is in. And Lenovo's Legion 5 Slim is one of the best mid-range gaming laptops that I've tested so far this year. So check out this video next to get all the details about it and see what it can do. I've covered pretty much everything in this detailed review, so I'll see you in that one next.